what is also a specific linked to that email address, we gave ourselves a name. So um, we are called Khan. Uh, Khan is, is a derivative of Catherine and Nadine, but we also really like the, um, um, how do you say, the double meaning of can do, yeah. uh -huh. because can in German is can in English, and it yes. speaks and spells very similarly. So that was a, a good coincidence of the of our initials. And so we have our email address is can at barstoff.com, and everybody can reach us via this. And we also even sign all of our emails only with can. I am delighted to welcome Nadine Bartenschlager and Catherine Niebuhr. Nadine was born and raised in Berlin and Catherine in Frankfurt. Both have a master's degree in business with marketing specializations. They started working with Beiersdorf 20 years ago and have had successful marketing careers for the Nivea brand in global, regional and local roles. Nadine and Catherine have been in leadership positions for more than 10 years. They are both mothers of young children and have explored working full-time, part-time and now as job sharers after starting their families. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Nadine. Hi, Hello. Karen. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining my show. Now, for our listeners, could you tell them where are you calling in from? And is there a particular site or food that you would recommend for any visitors in your area? Um, so I start. I'm Nadine and Kathleen and myself, we are both placed in Hamburg in Germany uh, in the moment. This is where, uh, was where we live and this is also where the headquarter of Beiersdorf Nivea is. And a special site, um, we do have a very beautiful harbor in Hamburg. It's one probably of the biggest harbors also worldwide. And in terms of food, I've got an idea, but probably Kathleen wants to say something. No, I'd love to hear yours. <laughs> I think there's a special treat in Hamburg. So you have to have a bread with fish. So we call it a fischbrötchen, which is very typical Hamburg. And I, I guess we would recommend it. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. I've been to Hamburg. It is truly beautiful. And I've been to the harbor, so highly recommendable. Now, um, I would love to learn more and have our um, listeners um, understand more about your professional background. So maybe, Catherine, would you like to um, start? For sure. So um, I... I studied business administration with a specialization in marketing. And then I, right after my studies, I did start my first job at Beiersdorf. That is 20 years ago. And I'm still with that same company um, and have actually really um, had a, a, a in-depth marketing career. As, as Nadine already mentioned, we have the headquarters in Beiersdorf. So um, I worked in the local organizations. So here we have the German organization responsible for the German and Swiss market, as well as the global headquarters of Beiersdorf. And I basically during the last 20 years hopped into global roles and local roles for different categories as Nivea is significantly larger in Europe than in the US or Canada. Uh, so we do have a lot of different categories and I've worked, uh, I always say I've worked for almost all of them except for deodorants and shower gels, but anything else, be it makeup or hair care or face products or, or men products, um, that, that's what I worked in, but always in marketing. So true marketeer by heart. Thank you. And Nadine? So we have a quite similar uh, um, CV, Catherine and myself. Um, I studied uh, also business, European business, but in England and in Germany. So half time there, half time here. And also directly after my studies, I started as a trainee at Beiersdorf. So also for me this year, I'm hitting the 20 years with Beiersdorf Nivea. Um, as Catherine, always also been in the marketing role in different roles, in local, regional, and global roles. And during my time at Beiersdorf, I also had the chance to, to work abroad, once in Spain as a trainee. And then I, when my kids were young, we also moved to the Netherlands for almost two and a half years. So I worked also in our Dutch affiliate. And before joining um, the marketing director role together with Keswin, 
I worked in the regional European team. Wow. That's, I mean, it's just such, you know, amazing to hear within your 20 years, all the different, um, you know, roles and responsibilities and areas you have, um, you know, covered between the two of you. So now I'm very curious. So from all of this background, how did you first hear about job sharing? And also, how did you two meet? Do you want to start, Nadine? Yeah. Yeah. So we actually met already 20 years ago. I think this is probably where we start. Wow. Um, so we met in our <laughs> first year, so long before job sharing started. Um, and since then, we are actually also friends. And um, so both of us in the last years, we experienced job shares in our teams. Um, at Bayersdorf, we already have job shares. Probably Catherine can support here for a couple of years now. And um, we always looked sometimes a little bit envied uh, the job shares in our teams as well. And um, this is how it started, the thinking process, already a few years ago. And then last year, and this is where I hand over to Catherine, we decided that we are going to apply for a job together. Exactly. And and what Nadine mentioned, I think Biasto started already 10 years ago to have job shares um, as part of Yeah, of, of the concepts that are that where people are working in. And we do have 40 job share couples at Basdorf right now in the headquarter in Germany, 20 of them being actually also in leadership positions. Um, so we had a little bit of an advantage probably versus other job shares that are probably going to be the first ones in their company. We have very good successful examples of job share couples who've already are in roles and even in leadership roles and doing an extremely good job. So I think that was definitely thing, something that made it easier for us. What we did or where we are the first, we are now uh, since May because we applied together for this open position of the marketing director, Germany, Switzerland. Germany is the biggest market for Nivea uh, of, of a bias of as Germany and Switzerland together. So it's actually the biggest marketing role in the company. And it's part of the um, the executive team of uh, the management team of um, of Germany. And with this job, we are now the highest, let's say hierarchy wise, the highest ranked job share couple in Bayersdorf. So that's the first, but we are definitely not the first job share couple in Bayersdorf. Wow, this is just amazing. And, you know, to think that 20 years ago you met and I'm sure at that point you might not have thought one day you're going to do, you know, be job sharing and on, as you just said, on the highest um, job sharing level. And so now for our listeners, um, could you maybe um, reflect a little bit um, what is a typical week between the two of you as far as like, you know, do you have particular days every week that one person works or, you know, how do you communicate with each other? So could you share this maybe, Nadine? Yeah, Catherine and me are actually in a full share job sharing, which means we are not dedicating any task to one person. So we really split everything, both of us know everything. And um, our week is structured that Catherine is working on Monday and Tuesday. Then we have the so-called magic Wednesday when both of us are there together. And then I'm taking over as of Thursday and Friday. This is how we structure our, our week uh, very typically. Of course, sometimes there are exceptions when one or the other has an appointment or there's an illness or there's a vacation, then um, the other one can jump in. And how we are doing our email system, I'm handing over to Catherine. Yes. Um, because as Nadine explained, we are in a full share. We don't divide topics. So to make it easy, I think one of the key principles for us was to make it as easy for the organization, for our teams to work with us as possible. And one big um, part of that is we have one common email address. So we have one common email address um, uh, sharing one inbox. And um, we also try to have um, common Teams chats. So where, wherever you want to reach us via Teams, for example, chat chats, etc., you can reach us because we are we are doing groups where both of us are in the communication stream, so that everybody's always updated. And what is also a specific linked to that email address, we gave ourselves a name. 
So um, we are called Khan. Uh, Khan is, is a derivative of Catherine and Nadine, but we also really like the um, um, how do you say the double meaning of can do, yeah. uh -huh. because can in German is can in English, and it yes. speaks and spells very similarly. So that was a, a good coincidence of the of our initials. And so we have our email address is can at biasdorf.com, and everybody can reach us via this. And we also even sign all of our emails only with can or can mm -hmm. so that we really act as one person towards the teams, towards the organization and not as two individuals. And probably one thing to add, Karen, um, how we typically work also on Monday, Tuesday, when Catherine is in the office, usually on her way home, she leaves me a voice message and we call it the daily news. And uh, the daily news lasts between five and 10 minutes. Um, and then I have an update what happened during the day. You get the in-betweens in meetings. So usually I know the agenda. I know what uh, we always have a common view on things. But it is always good to understand also if something, uh, the emotions in meetings or to mm -hmm. understand the views of other people. And this is what we try and cover with our daily news show for each other. That is excellent. And now, so as you're reflecting back On your job, Shane, what would you say has been the most surprising aspect of it? Um, maybe I start. I think we both, some things were obviously expected. The fact that you um, that you can manage your time a little bit, a bit better. Um, we have to say that we, we had a quite long onboarding phase um, where we worked a lot in parallel and now we really start to go into this three-day work um, schedule which leaves also two days to have just more time for yourself so that was expected what was less expected was a the fact how much you can actually learn from each other especially during this onboarding phase where we literally sat in meetings both of us and you see somebody who is great know-how, um, has a great experience that you value a lot as a person and as a manager, and you see her, observe her doing things completely different than you would, which leads to a lot of reflection about, okay, that's interesting. That's a completely different approach leads to a very, you know, leads also to extremely good results or partially even better than if how I would have done it. So I think this, this coaching um, that is integrated in this extremely tight feedbacking because we also give immediate feedback to each other. You get this extremely honest feedback from somebody you trust and that has the best interest in making you even better as part of our identity. Can Obviously, we both want to make each one of us the best um, um, we can be individually. So that that's was the surprising fact. One of the surprises we had um, when we started, how much growth potential you personally have or personal development you can get out of this um, idea of job sharing. Another very surprising factor for us as well was um, that our teams, as well as our bosses um, uh, and our peers really integrated and accepted um, our name. So it's really the work or the avatar of Khan, as we always say it. Um, and in meetings, they actually speak to us as Khan. And for them, it's not a problem at all that one or the other is in a meeting. And this is something where we at the beginning probably thought, okay, it will be much more difficult also to join a meeting, to have a conversation. But actually the people around us They are completely used to it by now. So um, it really works perfectly. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing. That's that's so interesting to, you know, to hear how quickly it got integrated. And also then, you know, that honest feedback. I imagine that probably that's one of the things I'm thinking about that job sharing, if somebody is thinking about doing, really has to think about can they accept honest feedback and can they really reflect upon themselves we also believe it's a very strong success factor for making job shares um, successful is that you have a very first of all you should have a good self-reflection mm -hmm. about what are your strengths and what are also your your development areas let's say mm -hmm. and to have a very honest conversation about exactly those because you need to know 
what you're buying in. In our case, we knew each other very long, so we had already a very good awareness. Nonetheless, we had this conversation. What, why do you want to do this? What are your objectives? Where's our, where are our limits? Um, those kind of things. Like, and we, all, we joked and we said, um, if every marriage would have such an intense discussion about what are my expectations, how, you know, why am I starting in this relationship? there would probably be less divorces because it's a very <laughs> conscious decision, but you have to be open about, you know, where you're strong and where you're not so strong. And if you can manage that uh, with the other person. Thank you. That's, that's such a good, you know, <laughs> reflection. And now um, for business leaders listening to us and they are thinking about, you know, this sounds really interesting. How could I, as a leader, start job sharing in my organization? What would you tell them? So probably to add on Catherine, I think there are always two ways. If you want to start yourself as a job share or if you want also to establish job shares in, in, in your company. So if you want to start a job share and be one of the tandem partners, I think Catherine outlined it very nicely. You should really look for a partner who is sharing the same kind of value and belief system as you. This is for us, we believe the basis. There's a lot in, in terms of daily uh, daily task, a lot of complexity usually in the, in the business. So you have to have somehow a same way of direction, a vision and a clarity how you want to work. And we always say if someone is very organized and the other person is probably very chaotic, those things you probably have to address before. It can work, but of course, it will be very much more complex than both of them have the same uh, um, kind of behavior and the si same kind of spirit in, in terms of working. Um, we also believe before starting a job share yourself, what you need is not only the value system, but we also would always recommend to have a coaching alongside at the starting phase, but probably also, also after a couple of months to really reflect what we just been mentioning. Different picture if you want to integrate a tandem in, in, your, uh, in your team. And this is what I'm handing over now to Catherine. Um, in fact, I mean, it is not so difficult. That's the first <laughs> message, actually, um, because um, there is one that's a salary component because as you noticed, uh, we, we have one day of overlap. So that is definitely an investment. So basically um, in terms of salary, we are not at 100%, but 120% because it's two times 60. And this is our company said, we want to make this model work. And this is what we invest as a company to make that model work because you need a certain level of um, transition time and handover time um, integrated into the working system. So this is one thing you should think about. Are you willing to invest something in it? and how much. Other than that, um, there is not much complexity in establishing it. It's more about the mindset probably that you have to um, address with probably your management teams. And um, the the biggest barriers or we noticed um, it's, it's really to turn the conversation from pure work-life balance topic, mm -hmm. which it is to a certain extent, but there is actually a very big part of efficiency and getting more out of um, out of two people if they work together and and a, there's a very strong level of um, performance in job share because um, what you can do in job share and that's the magic you can combine profiles that basically create a perfect match on a job that you would not find in a natural person so easily um, two competencies, uh, somebody with an IT background and somebody with a marketing background, I don't know, you can combine um, competencies or experiences that complement each other. You can combine personalities um, that complement each other, somebody very creative with somebody very analytical, which normally you don't find in one person in, in, in those extremes. And if they go well together and work well together, you get um, a perfect match. You get almost a, a profile that what is very difficult to find in reality in one person. So that is the efficiency plus the um, the inspiration and the quality improvement of the work that comes from working, having two brains think about an, a, a solution or an idea and cross-checking it before it's put out um, as an idea to the organization. So you 
always have this um, yeah integrated um, uh, how do you say loop of quality mm-hmm. um, in in the job share that is integrated. And there's another job share couple we met at the, at the Deutsche Bahn, and they really said the two of us for us no problem we we can solve every problem if we are together and probably better than any other person who works singular in in the in the organization probably Karen, we always have a very simple equation for business leaders who are thinking of it it's a one plus one equals a three and this is also how we sold our story when we pitched for the job and we truly believe this is true it's not only the quantity which comes out of course more but it's also really the quality and this is something which we now can confirm from our side but it's also confirms on the people who work with us what i'm curious now is how do you feel job sharing can help create more diversity and gender equality in an organization yeah so Kathleen already touched based on it but especially when it comes to um in in our case, the women coming back from maternity leave, um, at least in Germany and also I would uh, say in in, in many other markets, we do have a lot of people who would love to work in great jobs, but unfortunately jobs you can't just cut off by 20%. And the opportunity of being in a job share now offers you also the opportunity to really do high complex jobs across all hierarchies and do them together. And this is where we believe this really adds up to this topic of gender parity and also helps to get women and female leaders in roles, which they probably would have not done um, um, with, without this opportunity. Because from our experience, female leaders, probably more so than men, really think hard about their choices um, of career versus family and how much time they want to invest in a career because it means cutting cutting back on family time. And they more often probably than men, at least nowadays, decide for against the next level career step and for um, for a little bit more flexibility in time or less stress or intensity of job that allows them a little bit better work-life balance and this is the beauty that you can really put um, also in terms of company targets um, if you have uh, ambitious targets in terms of gender equality even on top management roles it is probably easier to reach that target if you offer those flexible models been so interesting listening to all your experiences is there anything today that we haven't touched upon that you would like to share with our audience i have two things probably which come in my mind karen one thing is um also the benefits towards the teams I'm not sure if we have addressed it yet but there's a nice comparison which we always say um in a family you hopefully or quite often you also have two people which you can ask for support. Um, If children come to their parents, they usually have two people, hopefully two people to address. And this is also in our case. So the team has a chance to approach Catherine and sometimes get a view, not a different opinion, but a view, a different view on things. Um, And this really also helps them to grow very nicely. So this is one of the feedbacks. And the second point, um, in terms of we quite often see job share only as a solution for women coming back in the workplace. And Catherine and myself, we are strong believer. It's also an opportunity for mixed genders. It's also an opportunity for mixed ages, just for people who really have the um, philosophy or the ambition to do something else then their classical role, then classically working five days in a job. Uh, it offers the opportunity also to take time for yourself, to also explore something new. So it is much more a new work concept than just something for um, yeah, women or moms coming back in the work role. One last thing, it is also simply much more fun to work together <laughs> because especially in in the higher you go up in hierarchies the lonelier it gets at the top we all know this and um in in a job share you always have somebody that you trust um that you can spare with but that you can also laugh with and and you know 
just be a very um, honestly yourself um, and de-stress a little bit together. So that's also something that is a true benefit, especially the higher up you go, the, the, the hierarchy ladder. Well, thank you for sharing this. Now, how can people reach you via social media? Where can they find you? Katrin and myself, we are both on LinkedIn. So you can find us there. So it's um, Katrin Niebuhr and Nadine Bartenschlager. I guess, Karen, you will also share, uh, share our names in the podcast. So this is where people can find us. And the next level for us is actually in the moment we are thinking, and this is a little secret probably at the end, also to join our LinkedIn profiles. So um, this is something which we are in the moment thinking of. It's not yet done, but as we are successfully sharing one email, um, this is definitely a thought which we are having to also make life easier. And again, how we started, make life more efficient, not only for us, but also for the people who work with us. And one little note, we have to say we currently post a lot in German. So once in a while, there's an English post. <laughs> but uh, as you can see or hear, um, we are very, um, hopefully we are very well able to answer questions or requests also in English. So don't hesitate to reach out um, to us, even though most of our posts are actually written in our mother tongue German. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being my guests today. It's been really, really wonderful to hear about your experiences and thank you for sharing them with our listeners all around the world. Thank, thank you, Karen. Our pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to the show. We hope you gained valuable insights and new ideas. To keep listening to future episodes, please head over to iTunes or your favorite player and subscribe and give it a rating. We would very much appreciate a review and for you to share it on social media so more people can start innovating in how they offer employment. Until the next time, goodbye.